Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Sherrard Show. I am your host, Sherrard. Hope you're having a wonderful Tuesday. I know I'm very excited, ladies and gentlemen, because we have a special guest on the show this evening. This lady is a very beautiful, very talented, platinum-selling artist that's been around for many years, but yet she still looks like she's in college, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> and she's here on the Sherrard Show for our very special segment entitled Changing with the Times. We have the lovely Adina Howard on the show, but we're going to get to her in one moment. But the Sherrard Show is brought to you by Essence Television, ladies and gentlemen. Essence Television is a network for the Sherrard Show where you can see the greatest episodes of your life. Just look at your monitor. We have Tommy Davidson, Smokey Robinson, Stevie Wonder, the Manhattans, even the Isley Brothers on the show. And then also you can see this wonderful episode with Ms. Adina Howard on Essence Television as well. Just check your local listings. And then it's also sponsored by iHeartRadio. So if you miss the uh, episode, this episode on Essence Television, you can also listen to it on iHeartRadio. Just smile and drive and listen to the best interviews of your life. Now, ladies and gentlemen, for those who are old enough, but not too old, you can remember the times in the 90s where you can call in some of the best music videos. You just see it on your monitor, you call a number in, and then voila, there it is playing um, on your television. It was the awesome thing. But there was a couple songs that just really rang true. I'd always play the end of the road by Boys to Men. I'd always call in uh, Ignition with R. Kelly, and then I always called in Freak Like Me on my box. And guess what? That beautiful lady that has sang that song and wrote it, Miss Adina Howard, is on a Sherrard show. Good evening, Adina. How are you? Good evening. I'm blessed. How are you and everyone watching? <laughs> we really appreciate you being on the show this evening. You know, Adina, we have a lot to talk about. Um, apparently, life has been pretty good to you because, again, you're keeping your beautiful youth, even from the 90s, and I'm sure the audience can agree. What has been your secret? Interesting, because every time I go on um, to do a post on Instagram, they're always asking me my facial routine and I literally just posted that a couple few weeks ago on what I you know what I use for my face but it's just something that happens to work for me I try to stay as natural as possible um I try to eat as best as possible drink you know enough water but you know mimosas are tending to replace water at this moment um so you know just just staying you know healthy and doing what works for me very good, very good. Well, Dina, you know, when it comes to music, again, um, music has changed so much over the years, but yet a lot of things have stayed the same. For me, certain songs just never leave my mind um, back from the 90s, and I can smile about them. But for you, how do you view the music um, in the 2000s and the 2020s compared to the time when you were chart topping? Um, they're a lot more bolder now than we were able to be back in the day. They, they have a lot more privileges, um, than we had back in the day. However, we, they, you know, they prepared us and we went through artist development when I was coming up to whereas nowadays you know, that really doesn't exist. So then there are a lot of differences, um, but at the same time, good music is good music. And that is, especially in the R&B area, it's, it's, it's shining, it's coming through. You know, the amazing thing about it is that music videos really sold that song. I mean, it really sold a song because, you know, I thought I had some rhythm there and I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna get that album because of the way that music video just sold a song. Is that true? Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it, the thing is visuals have a tendency to be able to really push a product to the next level. And that's exactly what it did because it was able to put a, 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 not only the face to the name, but just kind of the, um, the environment in which we would get down in, in the nineties. We, you know, we could go to house parties, eighties and nineties. We'd go to house parties and not a whole lot of stripping. We, you know, we would dance, have a good time. So that, that video was indicative of our era. Very much so. Now, you know, it's amazing that um, you're still uh, in a, so many ways a household name. People still can re remember when they hear that song. Oh, I know who sang it. A lot of times people just, they don't know that they know the song, but they don't know who sang it, but they can associate you with the song that want to, do you want to ride and freak like me? My question though is how have you been able to stay so relevant? 
after all these years? That's a good question. Um, I think part of it is really not, not trying to stay relevant because at the end of the day, I, I truly believe that if you feel like you're not, you won't be. Um, and if you're chasing something to, to stay relevant in my case, then it's going to elude you. So I just don't pay much attention to it because um, I'm relevant to the individuals I need to be relevant to. Everyone else is a no, never mind to me, you know, so. You know, it's amazing because when you were, um, when you were chart topping, you had a lot of competition out there. You had the boys, the men, you had the R. Kelly, you had the Jodeci, you had the Jade. You had so many groups out there doing their thing, but you were able just to hold your own. When you wrote your two hits, your big, big hits, um, Freak Like Me and Do You Want to Ride, was, were you writing from the heart? That's just what I didn't write that. I did not write Freak Like Me at all. Um, however, Freak Like Me is based on my personality at the time. And um, it was just basically, you know, a conversation that was had between the songwriters and the producers. And they came up with the song and it fit me like a glove. And when it came to the creativity of the Do You Want to Ride album, I had a lot of writers and producers working on my behalf. That's, you know, work, being signed to a label and having a budget. So <laughs> um, it was one of those things that that particular task wasn't necessarily um, part of my job title. It was to show up, sing, you know, record and do what I'm supposed to do. The writing and production for the most part was left to those who were getting paid to do it. You know, when I was um, when I was a kid and I was watching, I was in my teenage years watching those videos and things. Um, you all, many of them weren't professional actors, but it was so believable. It was so believable. Their acting, it was so great. I guess that does um, attribute to artist development. Is that correct? Absolutely, absolutely. You know, it really all depends on, you know, what you want as an artist as well, and how much you can execute. Because, you know, even though artist development may help, it still can't make, you know, a person a better singer. It can't make a person so much a better actor or whatever the case may be, but it can definitely help polish, you know, the talents that are there. You know, um, you your songs have been sampled in um, movies, um, films, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and also to this day, people still make reference um, to your music and sound. For example, Tina Turner even sampled some of your songs um, and with the What Love Gotta Do It. Is that correct? No, 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 no. Tina did not sample that. We sampled that from Tina. Okay, okay. Let me get yeah. that correct. Mm -hmm. Yes, honey. She was, the queen was before before me all day. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, we can definitely tell how young she looks. But how big of an honor is it for you when people are uh, referencing your songs some almost 30 years later? It's an honor, it's humbling. Um, it's a privilege because at the end of the day, that's one of the reasons why I stay relevant is because younger people are keeping my music alive and they're referencing me um, either by name or just by the music, you know, sonically what I've done. So um, I won't complain. It's, <laughs> you know, it's a blessing to, to still be around after so many, you know, decades. You know, it's amazing. Um... I talked to many artists on the show, such as the Isley Brothers, had Mel Carter, Jerry Butler, Gene Chandler, individuals like that, who've been around for thousands of years, it seems. <laughs> always, and and I, I crack jokes with them because, you know, they are legends and they've seen things that you, they've lived things that we've only uh, read about in history books. But right. the thing is that um, I always ask them, what does it feel like when young people like my, my daughter and people who are um, even younger than her that are listening to your song, you know, the singing Duke of Earl and all that, how does that feel to you? So that feels pretty good for you. I, I'd assume, uh, Dana, when you hear people may not even know the artist, but they just kind of <laughs> get down off it your does. It, it, it really, really does because um, it just lets you know that you've, you know, you've made an impact and you left a classic behind. And so you're a part of history and that's good. Now, with that being said, do you consider yourself a hip hop part pioneer? No, I, I don't, cause I don't believe that I was like a part of hip hop. I was more a part of R&B, mm -hmm. um, but y'all can put whatever titles you like. It doesn't make me a bit of difference. I'm still mm -hmm. here. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking to the wonderful Adina Howard, the singing sensation, a big time star, made many young boys grow hair on their chest watching the music. <laughs> watch the music video right there ladies and gentlemen it really did something to you make you grow up and if you didn't have any rhythm after listening to her music you found some rhythm and she's on the Sherrard show <laughs> she's on the Sherrard show we are going to take some of your questions and comments in a moment for the lovely uh Dina Howard again the Sherrard show is brought to you by Essence Television now my question to you though um Adina is what how do you visualize like when you listen to um the Takashi 6 Nines, you listen to the Kanye West Mm -hmm. You listen to, um, you know, R&B artists as well as uh, Beyonce. How do you feel they fit into the whole grand scheme of things of music today? I mean, it's all a big puzzle at the end of the day. It's, it's you know, the industry just in this interchangeable pieces. Everybody has their time. Every time everyone has their place, you know, their moment. And how do they not fit in the scheme of things? The beautiful thing about music is it's transcending. It's something that when it's all said and done, um, it touches different people in different ways, regardless of what the genre is. And you can't have hip hop without R&B and rap without this, that, and the third and all this. It's, it's all interchangeable. It's, all, it's, a, it's a unit. It's a sum of many parts. So, you know, and it's ever evolving. So how do they not have a space? in place in, in music. So now what artists, um, when you turn on your radio and you hear them, um, do you, when you listen to them, do you like stopping your tracks and just really enjoy their sound? There are moments where there are artists that, current artists and even past artists present. It's, I love music and I love to hear um, amazing talent and for me, I just there are, there have been several moments where I just pause and like, wow, that's that's a nice song. Or man, they have a beautiful voice. You have to at the, one for me. It's it's about acknowledging the talent, uh, regardless of where I am in the era. Talent is talent, and when it's undeniable, it would behoove you to just acknowledge it. That's amazing. Well, Dina, you were mentioning that you are going back. You're out on the road again. Is that correct? Yeah. I am back on the road again. How yes. does that feel being back on the road? Is there a lot changed? Does the places you used to go look different? What's the difference now in going on the road again? Same difference. Not, not a whole lot has changed. Um, you know, people still want to get up close and personal. The only thing is, you know, we're wearing masks, or at least I'm continuing to wear mine. Um, it's really, it hasn't changed, I don't think, because when you're in that type of environment, um, it's kind of difficult to do the social distancing and then you just have this, this energy of light and love and music and you're creating memories. And so it's just like, it becomes a community, becomes a family. You don't really focus on distancing. You just want to be in that moment of that energy and just enjoying. And so for me, it's pretty much the same. Now, now that's beautiful now. So you're working on a new album? I am currently just focusing on my shows. I'm thinking about getting back into the studio next year. Mm -hmm. Now, what it has much changed in the record industry from back then in terms of the record company? Are they more demanding, less demanding? What is it now um, when you look at it now? Like, OK, that wasn't like that in the 90s or wow, that's even better. How is your what's your perspective on it now? The world is ever evolving. And as it evolves, so will businesses in the music industry is a business. Um, certain agreements weren't prevalent in our industry back in the 90s to whereas they are now like a 360 deal. Um, we didn't have technology the way that they have technology now. And so there are ways to kind of maneuver around labels, but at the same time, being an independent and maneuvering on your own can be taxing because you don't necessarily have, you may not have the capital to do what the major labels are able to do. So a six in one hand, a half a dozen in the other, really. You know, it's amazing. I'm so glad you're back on the road. I see our, 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 our guests are also, um, our audience members are also excited to be able to uh, see you back on the road. Um, and also you said it may be an album coming out soon? There may be an album next year. Mm -hmm. there, there may be some new music. I don't, they, don't, they don't even really do albums anymore. 
Um, they just pretty much do singles, which makes a whole lot of sense to me. But yeah, there will be new music. Okay. Um, now, if there's an eight track version, just get me that eight track. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> like an eight track version of putting it there. Okay. Anyway, well, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take the audience questions um, this evening for the wonderful Adina Howard on the Sherrod Show this evening. Uh, we do have Charles. He have Charles. He just typed in, and he is from Grand Rapids, Michigan. He said, "I have all always... uh, Charles." Oh, incidentally, you are from Grand Rapids, Michigan. Exactly. Oh, oddly enough, coincidental, <laughs> you may know him. Well, Charles said, you have been making wonderful music for many years. He is so happy that you're back on the road. And his question to you is, what is what do you like the most about being on the road? And what don't you like the most about being on the road? What I like about being on the road is being around the people who appreciate what I do the energy, the light um, is very refreshing and it's, um, it, it fills my cup. So I'm able to operate from my overflow. So that's the one thing I really truly appreciate and enjoy about being on the road. Uh, the thing that I'm not a fan of is traveling. The flying, you know, to and from and having to deal with airports and all that stuff, that's the least of my, you know, liking when it comes to that. Mm, very good. I appreciate your question, Grand Rapids in the house, Charles. Grand Raggedy in the building. Okay. Um, this is from Alan. This is from Alan. He is from Phoenix, Arizona. He's saying, you look absolutely stunning, not trying to be forward, but you're absolutely beautiful. He said, are you related to Eddie Murphy's wife? Because you look a whole lot like her. Um, I am not. I am not related to her that I'm aware of. Um, and thank you so very much. Thank but you. but his question is, um, are you, when are they going to bring back singing in front of live bands? In other words, artists lose, using uh, live bands opposed to uh, singing behind, I suppose, computers and things like that. Um, so you're talking about basically track dates versus live band music. It, really depends, on, it depends on the promoter. It depends on the person who's putting on the event, what they want, what they can afford, what they want to see and hear. So it's really not up to the artist, so to speak, because you can have a band, but the promoter may not want to um, have to pay for all of those individuals. So it just depends. Very good. Very good question. This, we'll take a last question. And this is Mona. This is Mona. She is from Massachusetts. She said, oh, it's so awesome. Sherrod has had have you on your show. He's been wanting, she's been wanting that for all these years. And she's so excited to see you on there. Her question to you is, um, do you miss albums instead of cds and now mp3 players and things like that do you prefer the sound of an album or do you prefer the sound of a cd very good question Mona. i just prefer the sound of music um it doesn't really matter to me with what medium it's on i just prefer the sound of music and so that's the way i'm going to answer that that's a good question very good question we thank you so much for you all's questions tonight for the legendary in my and she's iconic she may be very humble and low-key about it but she's <laughs> most iconic um especially when i could have when i when i ran up my phone bill calling me in for your requesting your video shame on you adina shame now adina well, thank what, you very much <laughs> i really appreciate that my goodness it's just it did, i mean i'm not stuck in time but that 90s music was just so unbelievable just so unbelievable. But Adina, where can, where can your fans reach out to you to keep in contact or be able to ask you further questions or keep up with what you have going on on the road as well as what you have going on in the music industry? They can go to adinahoward.com um, and get all the, you know, all the deets on that. Um, Facebook, Ad uh, Adina Howard. Instagram, The Real Adina Howard. Twitter, Adina Howard. And I will be in St. Pete's. Uh, Florida, June 5th, and I'll be in Oakland, Tennessee, May 30th. So I have a couple shows coming up. If you're in the areas, make sure you come through. Oh, great. So they're going to be live concerts you can be able to watch? Yes, you can You can actually come. You know, we're going to be out and about in the world. Very know? good. Um, now, tell, tell those dates one more time so my um, it can appear in the monitor so our audience can write it down. May 30th, Oakland, Tennessee. And June 5th, St. Petersburg, Florida. Definitely, de definitely come on out. Um, I'm sure you're gonna have a wonderful time. You're gonna be singing some of your old classic hits as well. Oh, for sure, for sure. Oh, come on out. 
<laughs> yeah, and like, like I said, it's going to be on the website. I'm making sure, you know, on my social media, I post up, you know, to make sure everyone knows where I'm going to be. But absolutely, how can I not do the classics? Are you serious? Very good. Very good. Well, hopefully I can buy some rhythm. I'm going to try and buy some rhythm. I can. I'm so done. <laughs> Lord help us all. But you know, um, Adina, I'm on a mission and I always reach out to my guests about this. Many of them really, they, they either agree with half of it or none of it at all, but maybe you can help me out on it. I'm on a mission to bring back the doo-wops and the jerry curl. So I need you to help me, Adina, in um, bringing back doo-wop and the jerry curl. So I hope you are bored with that mission. Okay. You hope I, who you hope I what with that mission? I hope you on a board with that mission. Oh, no, I thought you said I hope I was going to abort the mission. I, I abort, abort. <laughs> 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 okay, so I guess I'm on an island on that one. Um, no Jerry curls or do wop no, support. No, 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 no. Uh, well, Adina, abort. on that note. I want to humbly thank you for being on the Sherrod show. Thoroughly enjoy it. Will you be coming back again for a second visit? We'd love to have you. Coming back where? Would you come back for a second visit on the Sherrard Show? Absolutely. Thank you so much. Definitely check out her music. It's right on your monitor, as well as the tour dates. Get on out there and support. This is an iconic young lady. She still looks like she is in her late 20s. I cannot believe it. What is the water she's drinking, ladies and gentlemen? And on our next episode of the Sherrard Show, we're going to have Mr. Robert De Niro stopping by, talking about what is it like acting at 77 years old, ladies and gentlemen. I like to hear his story. Do you as well? We thank you all again. We'll see you on the next episode. Bye-bye now. Thank you for joining us on this episode of The Sherrod Show. If you like additional information about our episodes, you can log on to thesherrodshow.com. You can also check us out on social media, like us on Facebook, look at our YouTube video, subscribe to our newsletter at essencetelevisionnetworks at gmail.com. If you would like to get information to the host, Sherrod, you can email him at thesherrodshow.com. Once again, thank you for joining us and we'll see you next week.